Chapter 1. Fasting will help you reach your weight loss goals and improve your health. Eve Mayer, one of the authors, grew up in South Louisiana where you don't eat to live. You live to eat. When she was eight, her mom was diagnosed with a devastating chronic disease for which there was no known cure. For 34 years, she went to specialists all over the country, and she dealt with treatments and medicines that often made her feel even worse. When Eve was 42 years old, her mom finally conquered her disease. Still scared that her mom would not make it another year, she adopted unhealthy behaviors to cope. She buried her feelings in food, hiding it, sneaking it, and gorging herself multiple times a day. Eve has been fat all her adult years. At her peak, she swelled to a size 26 at 300 pounds. Every diet plan she tried worked for a short while, but because she always felt hungry, she would give in, break her diet, and gain back more weight than she had lost. She always felt embarrassed at the gym, at restaurants, and at family reunions. In 2018, Eve decided to try to lose weight again, this time by following a low-carb, high-fat diet. She secretly assumed this diet would fail, too, but after a month, something felt different. She wasn't hungry every moment like she had always been, and lost 30 pounds after a few months, then started to stagnate. To stem the stagnation, she decided to read The Obesity Code by Dr. Jason Fung. The Obesity Code validated the low-carb, high-fat approach to eating, but then Dr. Fung suggested something she hadn't expected. He recommended that people who struggle with their weight will benefit from fasting. She decided to give fasting a try. That decision changed her life. She began to lose weight again. She felt healthier than she had ever been, and her body began to change in ways she could never have imagined. Best of all, the constant hunger messages flooding her brain stopped for good. Eve was worried that she could pass out if she skipped more than two meals, but she didn't. She thought fasting would make her tired and give her brain fog, but it didn't. She thought not eating would slow down her metabolism, but the opposite happened. She felt like a new woman. Eve reached out to Dr. Fung and collaborated with him. Dr. Fung also introduced her to his health educator, Megan Ramos, who felt a connection with Eve as she explained her own struggles with weight and a host of other medical conditions. Within a month, a plan was formed, and life in the fasting lane is the product. Chapter 2. Type 2 diabetes is a disease of too much sugar and too much insulin, which can be controlled by fasting. There are so many reasons to make fasting a part of your life. From a purely medical standpoint, many diseases are caused in part by excess body fat. Being overweight increases your risk of heart disease, stroke, and cancer. Losing weight increases your high-density lipoprotein, HDL, or good cholesterol levels, and lowers your triglyceride levels, which helps reduce the risk of those same diseases. Excess weight may raise your blood pressure, lead to or aggravate arthritis, disrupt your sleep, cause back pain, cause liver disease, and more. Type 2 diabetes, which is closely related to increased body fat, is also the number one cause of blindness, kidney disease, non-traumatic amputations, and infections. Fasting regulates your hormones. It's more than a diet. It resets your body's internal controls, allowing it to burn the right amount of energy to keep you alive. When we eat, the pancreas, a narrow six-inch long organ that sits behind the stomach and is part of both the endocrine and digestive systems, secretes the hormone insulin. Insulin signals to the rest of the body that food is now available to process into energy, and this food energy, calories, needs to be stored away for the future. Insulin also regulates the body's glucose levels, making sure they don't spike or plummet. It does so by helping to extract glucose from the blood as glycogen or in the body as fat. Because the body needs fat for protection, warmth, and energy in times of famine, insulin also prevents us from using too much body fat as a source of energy. The body stores food energy in two different ways, as sugar and as body fat. Sugar is available for quick energy while fat is kept in reserve. Eventually, when there's too much insulin flooding your system, the cells in your pancreas that produce it can no longer respond, and your blood glucose levels become high. If they stay high, you can now call yourself one of the estimated 500 million people in the world with type 2 diabetes. In addition to weight loss, exercise, and diet modifications, typically a diet low in sugar and carbs, the most common treatment for diabetes is a prescription medication. Metformin is the gateway drug for diabetes treatment and it works by limiting the amount of glycogen your liver converts into glucose, as well as helping your body use insulin more productively. Other drugs, including sulfonylureus, help the body produce more insulin or become more sensitive to it, excrete glucose into the urine, or slow digestion. 
However, it's disheartening, to say the least, that fasting is not recommended by the health community. Why? Because more than any drug or diet modification, fasting helps control your insulin. Type 2 diabetes is essentially a disease of too much sugar and too much insulin. What decreases sugar and insulin? Fasting. When your insulin is in check, your blood sugar stays in check, your weight stabilizes or decreases, and your risk of developing any number of chronic health conditions goes down. Did you know? By not eating, we allow insulin levels to drop, which tells the body that food is no longer available and that it's time to eat some of the food in the fridge, lysogen, or freezer, body fat. Chapter 3. What happens to hunger during fasting? People always assume that hunger will increase until it becomes unmanageable. The truth always surprises people. Hunger tends to decrease during fasting. Why? There are two reasons, and the first has to do with the two means by which your body derives food energy. During fasting, your body switches fuel sources. Instead of relying on blood glucose, derived from food, for energy, your body begins burning body fat, which is stored food energy. That switch is your body entering a state called ketosis. Once you begin ketosis, your body has access to hundreds of thousands of calories stored in the fat. You're feeding it, giving it everything it needs, so why would it need to be hungry? Ghrelin is the so-called hunger hormone, and unlike peptid YY and cholecystokinin, it increases appetite. So, if you want to lose weight on a long-term basis, you need to tune down ghrelin. How do you do that? In one study, subjects undertook a 33-hour fast, and ghrelin was measured every 20 minutes. Ghrelin is the main hormonal cause of hunger. It decreases with fasting, making hunger a manageable problem. Ghrelin levels are lowest at approximately 9 o'clock in the morning, the same time that studies of circadian rhythm indicate hunger is lowest. This is also generally the end of the longest period of the day during which you have not had food. This reinforces the fact that hunger is not simply a function of not having eaten in a while. At 9 a.m., you have not had food for about 14 hours yet you're the least hungry. The surge of counter-regulatory hormones that happens before we wake up also serves to deaden the appetite. Therefore, again, if hunger is not simply a function of an empty stomach and is instead a product of our hormones, then eating does not necessarily make you less hungry. There are three distinct ghrelin peaks, corresponding to lunch, dinner, and the next day's breakfast, suggesting that hunger can be a learned response. We are used to eating three meals per day. So we begin to get hungry just because it is time to eat. But if you don't eat at those times, ghrelin does not continually increase. After the initial wave of hunger, it recedes, and it spontaneously decreases after approximately two hours without food. So studies suggest that if you ignore your hunger, it will disappear. Your average ghrelin levels over 24 hours of fasting decrease, meaning that eating nothing over a long period of time makes you less hungry. This holds true on very extended fasts too. A recent study showed that after three days of a fast, ghrelin and hunger gradually decreased. When men fast, the hunger hormone decreases only by a small amount, but women show a huge decrease in ghrelin. Therefore, you'd expect women to benefit much more from fasting because their hunger drops more. Did you know, randomly skipping meals and varying the eating intervals helps break our current habit of feeding three to six times a day. Rather than being hungry just because it is time to eat, we become hungry only when we are really and truly famished. Chapter 4. There is a very fine line between food enjoyment and addiction. Food plays a role in every celebration in every culture and history of the world. Holidays call for midday feasts. Birthdays are celebrated with cake. Backyard barbecues, tailgates, neighborhood potlucks. Food is used to create community and connection. This is totally okay, and the good news is that fasting doesn't require you to skip these special occasions. But a problem arises if we are feasting or eating cake every day instead of once in a while, because that's when we've crossed the line from the simple enjoyment of food to addiction. While people have enjoyed eating since the dawn of time, food addiction is almost entirely a modern problem. When it is time to stop eating, our body engages natural satiety mechanisms. Whole foods like a ribeye steak are delicious and provide long-term energy and plenty of nutrients for fat storage. But could you eat a giant 50-ounce steak at one sitting? No way. Once you're full, you can't eat anymore. The protein and fat in a huge steak activate natural powerful satiety signals to stop us from eating too much. Even naturally, sweet foods like fruit have properties that trigger satiety mechanisms in our body 
that make it difficult for us to become addicted to them. When was the last time you heard of someone addicted to apples or totally, completely hooked on carrots? Never. In 2015, a group of researchers set out to identify and rank the most addictive foods. Nine out of ten are almost entirely made up of processed ingredients. Number one, pizza. Number two, chocolate. Number three, chips. Number four, cookies. Number five, ice cream. Number six, french fries. Number seven, cheeseburgers. Number eight, non-diet soda. Number nine, cake. Number ten, cheese. Habits are formed by three things, cues, routines, and specific rewards. A cue, such as stress, triggers a routine that leads to a reward, a feeling of relaxation or happiness. There are all kinds of cues. There are positive ones like getting married, being on a wonderful vacation, or getting your dream job. There are also negative ones like work stress, sadness, loneliness, and sickness. But no matter the cues, the routine always stays the same. Highly processed and refined carbs. Let's celebrate with ice cream. I'm feeling sad. Let's get some ice cream. To change our habits, we must change our routine. The reward to feel good does not require the use of highly processed carbohydrates or sweets. You can experience relaxation and happiness, that is, feel a real reward, without having to depend on food. You can use two strategies to help beat this cycle. First, substitute fat for sugar each time you have a craving. The fat signals to your brain that you're nice and satisfied and to turn off your appetite. Second, fast. Fasting similarly helps regulate your hormones so you can regain control over your appetite, but it also gives you freedom. Did you know, research shows that sugar is directly linked to obesity, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, cancer, and many other chronic diseases. Yet, our brains have become hardwired to associate processed foods with instant pleasure, happiness, and belonging. The thought of giving up these foods, even for short, fast, feels impossible. Chapter 5. Name your goals. Create a plan to achieve them and then follow through with your plan. You are at the beginning of an exciting journey. You may be tense and eager, ready for the gun to fire so you can launch toward the challenge. Or, if you've battled weight and health challenges for years, you might be anxious about what lies ahead. If desperation and self-doubt are some of your companions, it's time to stop thinking this way. No matter how many calorie restriction diet plans you've tried in the past, yes, you can do this. Remember, you are not the problem. You've simply been fed incorrect information for years. But with the right knowledge, your body can heal itself. Common lies about fasting. Fasting will make you sick. Quite the opposite. Fasting can lower your risk of heart disease, cancer, type 2 diabetes, and high blood pressure. Fasting will cause your blood sugar to crash. Your body does a wonderful job regulating blood sugar levels, so there's little chance of your body having a negative hypoglycemic response. Fasting will slow down your metabolism. There is no research that shows that fasting, even fasts up to three days, suppresses metabolic rates. You'll die of hunger. Have you ever skipped a meal? Look what happened. You didn't die. That's obvious because you're reading this summary. If you are out of the habit of goal setting, it is time to get back in the groove. You are reading this summary to discover how your body, mind, and life can be changed when you incorporate fasting. Start by deciding what you want to gain by fasting. The answer can be anything at all. Your goal is individual to your wants and needs, and it is vitally important to your success. Reaching your goal may not be fast or stress-free, but nothing worthwhile ever comes easily. Picture your fasting skills as a muscle you must exercise, rest, and grow. Some days, you'll flex that muscle with ease. Other days are going to be a challenge. It's during those times that focusing on your goal becomes important. When you've had a few difficult days in a row and find yourself wondering, is it worth it? It's your goal that will remind you why you're on this journey and that you are worth it. This road can get bumpy sometimes. Create one very specific goal, or if you must, no more than two that will help keep you motivated. It is possible you want to achieve many things, but limiting your focus to one or two most important goals will help you keep your eye on the prize and lessen your chances of getting overwhelmed. Your goals should be clear, specific, and concrete. For example, an unclear goal would be, I want to be more active. Active how and when? While a clear goal could be, I want to walk a 5K. Once you're clear about what your goals are, I want you to write them down in three places. You can keep your goals on a piece of paper in your top desk drawer at work. 
scribble them on your mirror at home, type them into your phone, or make them your computer screensaver. Every time you come across your list, read it out loud three times, adding the words I will at the beginning of each goal. You can also say them silently in your head. Did you know, the most successful people concentrate on one thing at a time, and they know that trying to do too much at once will inevitably lead to failure. You don't want to take chances on your health, so be patient and consistent. If you are, you will reach your goals. Chapter 6. The Relationship Between Sex, Pregnancy, and Fasting As you embark on a lifestyle of fasting, should you be ready to put your sex life on hold or postpone your dreams of getting pregnant? Not at all. If anything, you should be prepared for a re-energized libido. And, while we don't recommend fasting during pregnancy, it can help pave the way to getting pregnant. Some women worry that fasting will deplete their energy, which will cause their sex drive to plummet. The opposite is often true. Because fasting helps regulate all hormones, women find that fasting actually increases their sex drive. Fasting also may boost vaginal moisture, which helps many women enjoy sex more than they did before. Don't expect these changes to happen overnight, though. Positive sexual side effects usually occur within the first three months of consistent fasting, whether that's skipping breakfast every day or doing a 36-hour fast twice a week. Consistency is key. A regular practice of fasting helps keep hormone levels stable, and going off it may cause them to fluctuate. There are some women who experience a decreased sex drive due to fasting, but this is rare and can usually be attributed to inadequate intake of dietary fat from natural fat sources such as avocados, olive oil, coconut oil, and fatty fish, or sodium on eating days, leading to a nutrient deficiency. Usually, sex drive returns or increases once sodium levels are restored, though this can take four to six weeks, depending on compliance and the woman's unique physiology. Sodium intake is very specific to each individual. Salt food according to your taste on eating days. On fasting days, you can consume sugar-free pickle juice, or you can add salt to water, or place a pinch on your tongue and then drink water, whichever way works. You require, on average, between 1 and 3 teaspoons of salt per day. But if you have a certain medical condition like high blood pressure, you may need to avoid salt entirely. Always check with your doctor. If you've noticed that your salt intake has no effect whatsoever on your libido, you're obviously ingesting the right amount for you. By helping you lose weight, fasting may also help prevent some of the unwanted complications that can occur during pregnancy, such as gestational diabetes and high blood pressure. That said, it's important for a woman who is fasting for fertility reasons to closely monitor her cycles and stop fasting as soon as she knows she is pregnant. Pregnancy is a time for growth, and fasting restricts the nutrients that are needed for growth. Fasting may also negatively impact the quality of breast milk, so we recommend that nursing mothers not fast. However, it's perfectly okay to focus on time-restricted eating during this time. That is, eating meals within an 8-hour window and abstaining from snacking. Did you know, high insulin levels increase the production of testosterone from the ovaries, which eventually leads to the abnormal growth of multiple cysts. By reducing insulin, fasting may help reverse this condition. Chapter 7. Adopt a no-cost, no-time commitment plan to see if fasting might help you. Do you just want to know if fasting is for you? And would you like to avoid spending a ton of money, time, and agony to gain the health and body you deserve? These wants and the human need to put in the least amount of effort for the greatest reward are exactly why fasting is something you should consider and try. Why? Because fasting is simply a manipulation of time. It seems like such a little thing that it couldn't possibly be the answer you've been searching for all these years. But really, that is all fasting is. How long you need to go between periods of eating to gain the health you desire. Perhaps you have 5 pounds to lose. Or perhaps you have 500 pounds to lose. Choosing to control when you eat is a magnificent place to start. So, right this minute, adopt a no-cost, no-time commitment plan to see if fasting might help you at the very lowest level of work. It's okay to be lazy. It's not okay to ignore your own needs, wants, and dreams. You deserve your heart's desire. You hold the key to unlock it. The most stress-free way to begin fasting is to use a process called simple fasting because it takes so little effort. Lazy fasting. Simple fasting involves starting slowly with a manageable fasting schedule, then extending it if you like. But if doing minimal work forever is best for you, that's fine too. Your first major step toward fasting is to stop snacking, for good. Many of us have been told that we need to eat small meals and snacks throughout the day to keep our metabolic engines running. Well, guess what? If you snacked and snacked like a champ, 
you would get fat. It's easy to start. Are you ready? Stop snacking right now. How not to snack. Step one, eat three meals a day until you are full. Each meal should take no longer than one hour and you get to choose the time of the meals. You get to pick the food in the meals. If you drink soda or any kind of drink, even diet drinks, start limiting them to your meal times. If you must have gum, have it after you eat and within one hour of a meal. But no snacks, which means no gum, candy, mints, sugar, food, juice, sweet drinks, natural or otherwise, broth, smoothies, or sports drinks, except at mealtimes. Treat fasting like weightlifting. Build your fasting muscle gradually. Some of you reading this may realize that you eat 8 to 10 times a day. If that's the case, don't stop snacking cold turkey. If you do, you'd be eating only a third of the times that you currently do. Instead, cut out one snack time per day for a week, just like this. Week 1, go from eating 8 times a day to eating 7 times a day. Week 2, go from eating 7 times a day to eating 6 times a day. Week 3, go from eating 6 times a day to eating 5 times a day. Did you know? Eating all the time is sort of a nuisance. If you're trying to find food six or seven times per day, when are you supposed to get anything done? You are constantly thinking about what you need to eat and when to eat it. Chapter 8. Stepping into fasting will help you move forward with your life in a transformative way. You've been able to stop snacking. Step 1. Now it's time to head right into fasting. Don't worry, it's not that difficult. Step 2. Skip breakfast. Instead of eating three meals a day, you will eat two. And remember, no snacks. How can you prepare the night before you skip breakfast? Great question. Your dinner should consist of healthy, whole foods that will fill you up and make you feel good. Preferably stick to a low-carb diet. When you eat sugary foods or other products you've decided are not great for you, they can make you feel hungrier the next morning. Step 3. Skip lunch. Now that you're not snacking and comfortably skipping breakfast as often as you wish, you're ready for a day where you only eat an evening meal. If you think about it, skipping lunch after not eating breakfast only adds about six more hours of fasting. For most people, it also isn't nearly as traumatizing as they think it will be. Yes, you're going to get hungry at lunchtime, but keep yourself busy, hydrated, distracted, and determined to reach your goals. When dinner time rolls around, eat healthy, filling foods for a period of one hour and make sure to finish up at least two hours before you go to bed. Step four. Skip dinner. Step four is the most difficult, but you have stopped snacking, often skip breakfast, and are at ease with bypassing lunch a few times a week, yet still aren't hitting your weight loss and health goals. Then it's time for a 36-hour fast. Wait, 36 hours? I thought I was only fasting for a full day. Stop for a second and think. This fast is referred to as a 36 because you will not be eating for 36 hours. You finish dinner at, say, 7 p.m. You sleep for the night. You don't eat the following day. You sleep again. You wake up and eat breakfast at 7 a.m. Boom, you just fasted for 36 hours. Schedule this fast on a day you're as busy as possible and around as little food as possible. Set yourself up for success, not suffering, and do your best to limit mealtimes with others, shopping, and cooking. Because these things are sometimes unavoidable, you should always ask for support, and you may just be surprised at how helpful people will be. Remember that not eating for one day is called fasting, not starving. Step 5. Extend the fast to day 2. How does one prepare to not eat for more than one day? First, you must decide if you want to do it at all. So many people have lost weight and met all their health goals without ever doing an extended fast, and that is more than fine. This is not the case for everyone, though, and there are many reasons you might want to try an extended fast. They include, you want to speed up the process toward your goal. Your weight and measurements have stalled for a month or more. You are curious to see what it is like. Did you know, extended fasts can be a wonderful reboot for your weight and overall health. They can be life-changing for any number of health conditions, and they may even change your perspective on your health, happiness, and self-worth. Conclusion When people achieve something in life, there was only one way to celebrate. Cake, and champagne, and steak, and a loaded baked potato. You get the idea. Once you change to eating healthily and fasting, Celebrating every little success by gorging on food no longer works. You need new ways to celebrate. You are going to have a lot of celebrating to do. You need to honor your big goals, but you can also celebrate small achievements along the way. Maybe your big goal is to lose 80 pounds, but your interim goal is to bench press 80 pounds. The celebration should be commensurate with the achievement. Reward yourself with something small when it takes little effort to achieve it. 
For example, you might get the remote control to yourself for a night when you complete your first 24-hour fast. Celebrating is a big deal because it reminds you of where you came from and what you achieved. It reinforces your confidence and commitment. Honor your achievements with someone who supported you in your goals as a way of thanking them. Set aside some of the money you saved from fasting and put it in a bank account or an actual piggy bank for your celebration fund. It doesn't matter if you can afford 2 bucks a week or 200 a week. You can watch the savings toward your imminent success grow as you get healthier. Try this. Tips for getting to sleep after a full day of fasting. Number 1. Remind yourself that the sooner you get to sleep, the sooner you will eat in the morning. Number 2. Make sure you are well hydrated. Number 3. Consider melatonin supplements if needed. Number 4. Warm baths are great but are most helpful at least a few hours before bedtime. Number 5. Avoid computer, TV, and phone screens for a couple of hours before bed if possible. Number 6. Try meditating, deep breathing, aromatherapy, reading, or whatever makes you feel restful. Number 7. Decide what you will eat for breakfast. Don't prepare it because you might end up shoving some of it into your mouth accidentally that night. Knowing what you're looking forward to enjoying food-wise in the morning can make hunger more bearable.